Hi, Andrew Kramer here with VideoCopilot.net. Now, what I want to do is kind of go over what I have here. Um, I've created this comp for a website. And we have the background, we have the pyramids here in the middle ground, we have the foreground, which is this wall. And what I have is each one of these layers are separated into elements. We have the sky as the background, we have the pyramids by themselves. And I've saved these as PNG files out of Photoshop so that I can have all this transparency data to work with. Now let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is comp this sky element into a new comp by dragging this down to the new comp button. And the next thing I want to do is put the next element on, which is our horizon, which is the sand. Drag that down here, hit Alt Home. We'll take that to the zero marker there. And let's go and grab the pyramids and our night wall. Okay, the cool thing about this is each of these layers represents a different plane on the composition basically. So we can separate these into 3D space and hopefully create some cool little views and some cool angle changes. First thing I want to do is make sure that my comp matches up with our reference which is this completed comp here and the first thing I want to do is go ahead and lower the opacity of this zoom in a little bit and select our night wall layer and go ahead and just push that up so that it matches with our background and that way when we fade in our buttons everything will be pretty much the same spot where everything is. We can go ahead and delete that reference file for now and before we turn all these layers into 3D layers because right now we're just 2D compositing is I want to create a new camera so from the layer menu new camera and make sure we select the 35 millimeter preset for this instance go ahead and hit OK uh, it's telling us we don't have any 3D layers but that's OK hit OK and let's go ahead and turn on each of our layers into 3D space and we have a little switch here a little 3D box and we can click them all on um, do them one by one or if you click on the first one and hold down the mouse and drag down turn them all on likewise with all the other switches and so what do we have? We have all the layers in 3D space, but right now they're all taking up the same spot. So what we need to do is we need to separate these into 3D space. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and use the preset camera views in After Effects. Right now we're looking at the active camera and that's this camera that's part of our comp. But we can also change it from our active camera to these top um, views basically. So let's go into the top view and what I want to do is I want to basically move our sky element way in the background our sand um, a little bit closer but further back also our pyramids kind of in the middle ground and we'll go and keep keep our wall up front so let's go ahead and start right now by taking this night sky and pushing it far in the background alright well if you're new to 3D when you select a layer you're gonna notice that there's this little gizmo on here that has some different options that you can move the layer into different dimensions basically. One way to move this layer into the far back distance is to uh, roll over the blue part which is the Z and push this back. Now the only problem is when we zoom out here it gets so small it begets, it, it's difficult to grab it. Frankly I think that's still a little tedious so what I'm gonna do is with the layer selected I'm gonna hold down shift and push the up arrow key and basically that'll just push that thing far off into the distance and I don't have to play around with any of that stuff. So let's go ahead and grab the sand layer, selecting it, and shift and the up arrow key. Uh, one thing before we get started, let me go ahead and select these layers and change the color to yellow and we can see it a little bit better. Alright, let's go ahead and move this sand a little bit further in the background. And because the sand meets with the horizon in our comp, we want, we want it to be a little bit closer to the sky. And the reason um, we do that is that way when the camera moves um, it doesn't parallax so much and you don't get a lot of um, changing of positioning. So let's go ahead and take our pyramids and maybe move it halfway the distance and let's spread these out just a little bit better. Let's grab the sand in the sky and really push that into the distance and maybe a little more and we'll move our pyramids maybe halfway say about there. Okay now I'm gonna go from the top view back to our active camera and let's go ahead and zoom back in here um, by the way I'm just uh, rolling the mouse you can also just select these options here okay now we have a problem well sorta all of our layers in the far far background are very small and we need these to be back to original sizes so let's go ahead and select the night layer and we need to scale these up so that it's still far away in Z space, but that the size of it is relative to our original comp. So let's go ahead and drag the corner, hold down shift, 
and line that up with the edge of our comp where it was before we started moving it. Same with the night sand. Let's go ahead and holding down shift, enlarge that. And, and the night pyramid. Let's go and move that forward some. Okay, very good. Now you'll notice that all of our layers are in 3D space. If we take this orbit camera tool, we'll notice that everything is spread across 3D space. Now, the first problem right now is that the position or the pivot point of the camera is somewhere right about here. Um, as you can see, the camera is kind of rotating around this front wall, and we don't want that to happen. We actually want the camera to rotate around the furthest point for this particular case, which would be the sky. So let's go ahead and go back to the top view, zoom out here, select the camera, and you see this little red, um, this little red circle X here. That's basically the pivot point for the camera, and we need to move that so that it's all the way in the back. So if, if you start dragging up and hold down Shift, it'll stay exactly straight, and go ahead and let it go right with the last layer, which it would be our sky layer. Line that up right with the last layer there. And go ahead and zoom out. Let's go back to the active camera. And now if we orbit around, you'll notice that the camera stays locked down to the background, which is a little bit more pleasing and I think really does really does a good job. So let's go ahead and play around with what we're going to do. Um, you've probably seen DVD menus that have maybe a little animation and they animate in, the titles come up, and then you click play and then it does a little animation out and then it goes into the movie well even though this was for a website let's go ahead and think about it in terms of a DVD menu so let's go ahead and zoom in on our timeline here and I want to go ahead and pull up the camera transform properties and I'm gonna move forward to say about three seconds I'm gonna go ahead and put a keyframe on the position and the point of interest by turning on the stopwatch here and that way if we lock the camera into this spot we can always come back to it and this is basically the spot where we end up in our comp but if we go ahead and move our cursor back a little bit say um, before the actual end of the animation we can start making some movements for example if we start playing around with this position by the way we can either uh, click on it and type in a value or if you just click on the number you can drag left and right or up and down I think and we can uh, get some different views we can also use these camera tools that basically allow you to move the camera around the orbit tool and such but for now let's just go ahead and use the numbers here that way we can work on just certain axes at one time axes or whatever they're called who knows somebody knows anyway if we drag up if we drag rather down on the camera's position we notice that the camera goes behind this wall and if we play the animation forward it's as if somebody's standing up and the background is being revealed. To take that a step further we can maybe bring the camera closer to the wall maybe and drag uh, the camera maybe over to one side and that way what we'll get is kind of a pulling back and then kind of revealing over this hill or over this wall so it's kind of a neat effect although the one thing I kinda of wanted to touch on is digital depth of field right now as you can see everything is in focus our backgrounds in focus and our foregrounds in focus but what we can do is we can actually uh, create depth of field using After Effects cameras and what depth of field is is basically having a focal point and for example if we turn on the depth of field uh, there should be a minor change but if we turn the aperture all the way down to zero everything should be in focus now if we turn it up a lot that basically uh, simulating a camera's aperture opening up very very wide you'll notice that we have a very shallow depth of field and so if we if we move that around um, to the focal point of the wall you'll notice that it's in focus and then if we move it forward we can get the background to be in focus and our wall to be out of focus I think the pyramids would be in focus right now and if we move that a little bit further we can also get the background to be in focus but what actually what I want to do is I want to focus on I want to focus on just the wall so let's go ahead and move the transform let's move the keyframe up to our first keyframe and let's go ahead and make the distance of the focus to say about 400 and our wall let's see our wall should be in focus about right here and you'll notice the background is out of focus let's turn the aperture down to maybe about 60 
um, maybe 150. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, like I showed you before, if we turn the aperture all the way down to zero, everything will be in focus. So instead of playing around with the blur level or um, anything else, let's just go ahead and play with the aperture. So let's set the keyframe for the aperture, and let's go ahead and move forward to right before the end of our animation, and let's turn the aperture all the way down to zero, meaning everything uh, will be in focus. So now if we play this animation, and... Let's go and preview that with the zero key. Okay, that's just about done rendering. So let's go and hit the zero key again to play it. And as you can see, the focus kind of pulls away from the one spot and actually puts everything into focus. So it's kind of a, ni a neat effect. And then what you would probably do is animate on these titles. So um, just at the end of this, let's go ahead and bring these titles up and fade them in. Um, I'm going to turn on the stopwatch there for the opacity. Turn down zero. Forward 10 frames. 100. Okay, so it ends and the titles come up, right? Very nice, very nice. Now the other thing we want to do is once the animation is done and somebody clicks on say play or whatever it is, it animates out. And so let's, uh, let's go ahead and play around with that. Let's uh, move forward a little bit here, and let's go ahead and fade these titles out so that the titles fade out, and then the animation occurs. So let's go ahead and put a keyframe on the position of our camera and move forward a couple of seconds. And let's say we make the camera rush forward or something like that. Let's go ahead and push the camera forward, and let's go ahead and bring it down just a little bit so that people can't see how hard we worked on this. There we go. We rush it forward. And sure, we could keep going on, maybe put in a ground, but that takes a long time. These tutorials are already getting pretty long. Let's actually just go ahead and make a new adjustment layer. And let's go ahead and grab an instance of levels, adjust levels, and keyframe the histogram, move forward to the end of our animation, and what the heck, let's just blow it out. I know we're running out of ideas here, but sometimes a simple method uh, works pretty well. We can also go to the red channel and maybe make it a little warmer, so we kind of get maybe a, a fiery effect perhaps. Uh, let's go ahead and change the adaptive resolution. Okay. So it kind of fades out, very nice, and then oh, let's fade that out. Let's go ahead and move the adjustment layer over just a little bit. Okay, this time, the titles fade out, the animation goes forward, the camera blows out, and bam, the movie starts, right? Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm Andrew Kramer with VideoCopilot.net.